John the Ripper is a fast password cracker currently available for many flavors of Unix, Windows, DOS, and OpenVMS. Initially developed for the Unix operating system, it now runs on 15 different platforms. It's one of the most popular password testing and breaking programs, as it combines a number of password crackers into one package, auto-detects password hash types, and includes a customizable cracker. John the Ripper is free and open-source software distributed primarily in source code form. If you'd rather use a commercial product tailored for your specific operating system, please consider John the Ripper Pro, which is distributed primarily in the form of native packages for the target operating systems, and in general, it's meant to be easier to install and use while delivering optimal performance. Now, there is another version of John, which is the community-enhanced version. This version integrates lots of contributed patches, adding GPU support, OpenCL, and CUDA for a hundred of additional hash and cipher types, including popular ones such as NTLM, RAW, MD5, etc., and even things such as encrypted OpenSSH private keys, ZIP, and RAR archives, PDF files, etc., as well as some optimizations and features. So let's see John the Ripper in action. Official free and open source version of John the Ripper is embedded in Kali. If you type John with no parameter, you'll see the manual page of the tool. You see the usage and all the options of John. Now let's build an offline dictionary attack with John. The first parameter is double dash word list. Don't forget to put the equal sign after the parameter. Name of the dictionary file with the full path comes here. So I'll open another terminal screen and search for a password list using the find command. Now there is a folder called word lists under the Metasploit framework folder. Let's go to that folder to see its content. Now there are a lot of word lists here for different purposes. Right now I want to look at the length of the password list file. cat password.lst pipe wc for word count. The first one is the number of lines and the second one is the number of words, which is the same with the line numbers, and the third one is the number of characters. So there are about 90,000 passwords in this list. I'll visit the file with less command. You can search a word inside the less command by pressing the slash button. So I'll search for the password of the administrator. No result. MSF admin? No result. So note here that these steps are just to have successful results. In a typical penetration test, you won't know the passwords of the victim systems. Beyond that, if you already know the password of the victim, well, what's the reason of adding it to a dictionary and then finding it again? Suppose that these steps never happened and the words were already in the list we used, right? Now I'll open the dictionary and add a few words. So I'll repeat that we're just supposing that the process never happened and the words were already in the list, but I just want to show you the mechanics of it. So now we can use this list as the word list in John. So write the file name with the full path. The second parameter is the hash file. Now I'll run the command, adding no more parameters first. So if you don't specify the hash type, John detects itself. It detected the hash type as LM and warns us about the NT hash. And here are the results. Guest password is empty. It also shows the first part of the administrator's hash and the second part of CyberLab's hash and as you see here, in all uppercase letters. Now I'll recall the latest command and add the format parameter as NT this time and hit enter. Here are the results. 
Now we see all the letters in their own formats, uppercase or lowercase. So now I want to try to crack the Windows 8 hashes. So I'll give the hash file of the Windows 8 system this time. I remove the format parameter and run the command. John reckons the hashes as LM and got no result. So let's give the hash format. Now we have a result. Password of a Udemy user is Udemy 12. But wait a sec. Windows 8 has a user with the password 1234QQQ, uppercase Q, and dot, which is the same with the password of the administrator user of Windows XP. We know that the word is in the dictionary, so why couldn't John crack it? Well, the answer is inside the john.pot file. So let's find its location using the find Linux command. And let's see the content of the file with the cat command. So John stores the findings in john.pot file with a hash format. And if it finds the same hash with the same format, it doesn't try to crack it again. So you should look at the john.pot file for the hashes you try to crack with John, right? So if we run the latest command again, it won't crack any hash because they've all been cracked before. So if you delete the john.pot file and run the latest command again, you'll see all the crack results of the hash file. Good, so let's move on and try to crack the hashes of the Metasploitable Linux VM now. The hash file is hashm2.txt. And don't give the format parameter. I'll let John detect the hash type and hit enter. So it detected the hash type as MD5 crypt, and that's correct. So look at that. We cracked passwords. The passwords of the Metasploitable users are not so complicated, are they? So look at the john.pot file once more. And now you see the new hash is stored with hash type 1, where 1 stands for MD5. Excellent. 